What are progressive web apps? All right, we're pleased to be joined by Lee Brandt. He has been working on web apps since 1997. He is a master of the web. He's literally a webmaster. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Um, so I have been writing code since 1997 professionally. Quite a few years unprofessionally before that. Um, some people might still say I write code unprofessionally, but you know that's their problem, not mine, I guess. <laughs> They're the ones that have to I'm maintain my code. All of us. <laughs> Right? They have to maintain my code, so that is their problem, literally. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Pleasure Thank to have you for you having there. me. Absolutely. So, what can you teach us in five minutes? Oh, wow. Um, so, lately I've been really kind of interested in progressive web apps. Um, I've heard the term a lot, and um, one of the things that I always like talk to clients about is, do they actually need a mobile app? Right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't need a full-fledged mobile app. If you don't need to get a hold of um, the accelerometer in a phone, or if you don't need to do some other physical things, then you probably don't need uh, a mobile app. You can get away with a good, uh, responsive web application. But now we're starting to talk about progressive web apps, and the browsers are coming along to the point where you can actually do some of these things that you used to only be able to do in phones. For instance, you can send push notifications from a web application. Um, but the idea behind progressive web apps is that um, as the internet connection uh, fails or gets weaker, um, the, the uh, response, the, the website, gets progressively um, less enhanced. And as your internet connection improves, we can do more stuff, so all of a sudden I'm showing you more stuff or doing more stuff. Um, and I started off by uh, watching um, Nick Molnar's course on Pluralsight. If you have a Pluralsight subscription, it's definitely uh, worth watching. He's got two courses on it. Uh, one is almost exclusively on service workers. Um, but one of the things that he says, and it kind of solidified in my mind what progressive web apps are. So for instance, um, what is this? Looks like a staircase. Yes. What happens if the stairs are moving? Is it an escalator? <laughs> <laughs> That's an escalator, right? So what happens if the electricity goes out? It's not an escalator anymore. There's stairs again, right? Mm -hmm. So you can still get to where you want to go. It's just progressively, if, if I have electricity, progressively the experience gets better, right? And to me, that, that kind of solidified in my mind what progressive web apps are all about. If the browser can't, we've been doing it for a while with like um, JavaScript, uh, uh, what do they call them? Fill-ins? Polyfills? Polyfills. Um, so we've been doing this for a while with JavaScript polyfills, so if the browser doesn't have this thing available, here's some JavaScript code that I can put in there that will polyfill this uh, enhancement in. Um, but now we're starting to get into things like if the browser doesn't have connectivity. Um, not having connectivity is kind of easy to detect, um, and we can like offline some of that stuff, cache what you've been to. If you try and go to something you've never been to before and we don't have a cache, then we can just say, hey, you know, we, we don't have an internet connection, so I can't get to you. Um, the trickiest part of progressive web apps is what's known as Li-Fi, right? Where it looks like you have a signal, but the signal's so weak that you can't really do anything. Uh, and that one is really hard to detect. And generally what you want to do is go ahead and serve up the cached version and then when you finally get the data back from the server, you can actually update that data in the browser with the actual fresh data. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times what people do for offline data is they'll put like a little bar at the top that says, you're currently offline, anything you do right now will be synced with the server once I have good connection again. Um, and unfortunately, there's no way to say your connection's bad, but we can go ahead and serve you the cache data, and we can say it's from cache, and then once we get it from the server, we can update the cache, and then update the, the UI. So that is what progressive web apps are about, but progressively enhancing the experience as you get better connectivity, as you get better capabilities in the browser that you're in, or whatever. So um, it's a lot of work, but I think it's totally worth it that you can not only make it um, a good web app, but there's also things that you can do like manifests that make you be able to add it to the home page, your, your home page of your phone, and now it looks like an app, and it acts like an app, and there's no 
web browser Chrome around it, even though it's still using the web browser, it's removed all the Chrome from the web browser around it, and it just looks like a web app, it acts like a web app. So, and that to me is super exciting because now I can take my web development skills, I've done mobile app development and web development, and mobile app development is always tricky because you have to deal with the stores that you're going to have to put the app in, and you have to deal with the different versions of uh, Android, the different versions of iOS. iOS is a little bit less tricky because they kind of force you to update, but Android, there's always times when somebody's still running Android Nougat, you know, or right. whatever. Um, so you have to like program for that or decide what lowest level you're going to support. Um, so I think it's really exciting to be able to um, give somebody a web app that actually feels like an application. So is there a library that's already available that kind of does some of the stuff or do you have to kind of roll your own? How does it, like how would you approach um, it? A lot of it's still fairly new and I'm still fairly new to it. Um, but service workers is probably the biggest thing. Just because all service workers do is they sit in between your web page. So you've got your server here. Bad drawing, but uh, I've got my phone here, Wi-Fi. And when it makes a request, it goes through this service worker. That's supposed to be a cog, not a flower. <laughs> uh, it goes to the service worker, and the service worker just forwards it onto the server. If it can't find a connection, then it pulls it from cache. And so you can code the service worker to do what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. There are some libraries for service workers that are already there that'll do some basic stuff for you, but it's still so new um, that, and I'm still no, so new to it that there may be more out there than I know about. But is this more appropriate for like line of business applications or consumer facing applications? Where where are where do people find progressive web apps typically are used the most, or are they just used across the spectrum? Um, I think the biggest, it, I think they're used across the spectrum, but I think the biggest kind of area that this is happening is when you've got like a big mobile presence. So if you're looking at your Google Analytics and you see that a lot of your traffic is coming from mobile browsers, then you might start considering progressive web apps for for progressing that enhancement for those for those devices. Um, for me that's what I would do is like look at my traffic patterns and see who's coming from where. Gotcha. Nice. That is really exciting, though, after as long as we've been trying to fight the good fight of yeah. uh, progressive enhancement, and what do you do when you fall back? It seems like that is what we spend the most amount of time Yeah, doing. and there's a lot of times when people are like, well, this doesn't work on Android 4.1. Oh, okay, well, do we want to support users on Android 4.1? And honestly, you don't. You almost don't have to worry about that anymore because you just have to worry about what browser they're actually using on their phone. So as long as they have a decent browser that supports this service worker stuff, um, which unfortunately the the support is still kind of coming. The biggest problem right now, and it's weird to me because um, IE used to be the kind of redheaded stepchild that was always the one that caused problems, and now we're getting to the point with like IE 10, IE 11, and Edge, where it's up to date with all the rest of the browsers, it's supporting all the right standards, and now WebKit is becoming the redheaded stepchild and <laughs> Safari. So all this stuff that you do in all these browsers, you actually have to do it a second time, specifically for Safari, if you want to support Safari browsers. So it's just, it's a little weird. <laughs> no, but thanks for the overview. That was actually pretty enlightening. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for yeah. your time. Well, thank you for thank having you. me on. It's great to be here. You bet. Thank you. Don't forget to share this video on social media. And comment below to be entered into our weekly giveaway. Tell us what questions you have for our guests. See, See you, you next time. time.